Before we start, I would like to explain what we understand under the Swiss type slaves. Uh, so on the screen, you can see the typical uh, structure of th this kind of machine. Usually this machine contains main spindle, C1, sub spindle, axis C2. Uh, it has uh, two channels. It's very important. The first channel, channel of main spindle, controls axis Z1, X1 and Y1. Second channel, channel of sub spindle, controls also three axis X2, Y2 and Z2. Uh, also, B axis is possible. Uh, and also, this kind of machine usually have a part catcher that is absent on this picture and uh, has a bar feeder so our our machine have to uh, our program have to control all these devices uh, we analyze it a lot of uh, a, a lot of manufacturers of this kind of machine you can see all these names and most of them have exactly the same structure that is shown on this picture uh, some somebody will ask that does we uh, do we support the free channels no we don't support but it's less than five percent of this market so let's go to sportcom uh, so on this screen uh, you can see machine uh, machine name uh, Goodway uh, S double SW twenty, and uh, I already loaded the tools, uh, so we can see the uh, we can see the tools here already loaded, and uh, let me uh, and also we have the part that is fixed in the spindle. Let's check what what kind of part uh, this part was built in sprutcam so this part is parameterized i can easy uh, change any sizes so i recommend you to use this uh, internal uh, cut system of sprutcam it's uh, it's quite good for the simple parts uh, let's go back to Let's go back to machining. I make machine invisible. So we have our part and uh, the workpiece. It's already defined. And uh, what is important right now? Uh, if I open, if I open the axis, uh, axis Z one is already in the limit. On the limit and uh, the the part overhang is overhang of part is zero and the first operation that we need to perform is bar feeding uh, so let me create this operation uh, move part bar feeding yes so right now you can see that the uh, cutoff tool is already fixed in the beginning uh, near the part, uh, near the part, it's because uh, this tool is already located in this place after the previous part was cut it off. So the main parameter of bar feeding operation bar is bar overhang. Bar overhang it's the uh, it's the maximal distance I would like to machine of this part. By default, this value is calculated as the part lens and uh, uh, part uh, and the cutoff width of cutoff tool and uh, some additional distance uh, if i if i change this distance you can you will see that the z axis moving is moving and uh, but the part is stay in the same place let me disable all these axes so when we can 
watch it better and make it transparent. So return back. So when I change this distance, okay. So let me input, for example, seventy. Uh, what happens if I go to simulation? Expand the tool pass. So check off. After that, spindle go back. Part is pressed to the cutoff tool, and after that, tool go out. So this bar feeding operation must be the first in your project to machine on the three slaves. The next operation, it can be any operation for the machining in the main spindle. Uh, let me create, for example, a deriving. Uh, define the job assignment, for example, to this place and to this place. OK. Uh, if I calculate the tool pass, we can see. Let's go to simulation. Uh, you can see that the tool change position is too high. Let me change it. Uh, tool change position. Like to replace it. Something like that, maybe. Recalculate the tool pass. And let's go to simulation. Bar feeding, cut off, and OK. We will prepare the simplest project. So the next operation, I would like to add the cut off operation. Uh, lay part off. Uh, go to job assignment. Replace the site of cut off and calculate. Uh, it seems that's all. And uh, very important, very important moment. Uh, I would like to explain. So at the moment in the job zone of machine, we have the two instances of a part. So uh, I have to define that the part in the main spindle it's the separate part. Let me create the part. So nothing changed. I just said that all this free operation is working on the main spindle. And at the same moment exists another part. Let me create structure, another part. This part is located in the counter spindle. And uh, I need to define the place. How is it fixed? For example, this way. You can see that the workpiece of this part, it's the result. It's the result of the machining of all previous operations. And so you can see this uh, cut it off uh, part of workpiece. We can see it because I didn't enable the deleted chips in the Lave part of. So let me recalculate tool pass. So right now I can see the workpiece uh, of the part in the sub spindle, in the counter spindle is correct. So if I am located on the main machine, we can see two parts. When I watch in here, we can see only main part part in main spindle and the part in the sub spindle. OK, so after that, I would like uh, I would like to move the part from main spindle to the sub spindle to do it. Select this one and create move part turn takeover operation. Yes, this operation and th this operation takes the part from main spindle and move it to the sub spindle. 
And in the second part, I would like, for example, to create the machining for the sub spindle locking. Let me create, for example, the same adderifying, define the correct tool, uh, this one, and uh, also I would like to define the job zone. Mm, this one disable it's it's very comfortable to disable the machine visibility when we so let's enough it's the machining it's the machining in the counter spindle make the machine visible so right now we can go to simulation and check all our process let me start reset the workpiece so you can see that right now at the moment we can see only one part if i run the simulation bar feeding roughing cut off take over and the machining in the sub spindle uh, very important moment so right now we define it the process uh, that have the takeover in the middle we have the machining in the main spindle after that takeover and after that uh, machining in sub spindle but in real time machining will be performed simultaneously in both spindles and i can switch on this multi-channel mode what happened we can see that pre-operation in the main spindle and uh, to operation in the counter spindle if i run simulation right now we can see two work pieces visible and if i start with simulation we can see that main and sub spindle work pieces machine it together machine it together after that there is the part ejection and uh, cut off and bar feeding that's all let me explain what uh, let me explain in details what happened so uh, you you can see you can see what sprutcam have done automatic reordering and synchronization <coughs> when we develop the process for the swiss slave machine we develop it's very comfortable to design the consecutive process consecutive process bar feeding first after that machining in the main spindle after that machining in two spindles if it is necessary after that cut off and take cover after that sub spindle machining and after that part ejection but the real parallel process performed in this uh, segments so bar feeding and main spindle allocated in this oh sorry in this block uh, machining in sub spindle and part ejection machine performed in this block the these two blocks takes most of the time of the process and the machining in two spindles and cut off is later so sprut come automatically converted this consecutive process to this parallel process and we can and we can uh, simulate at any time or this or this and we can in any time easy switch from this to this process it depends on what we debug at the moment in our project okay in uh, in turn clock sure sure uh let me go back so i hope it's understandable and uh, what we can see here our operation is uh, reordered so the operation of the second part is in the beginning here and take over in the end in the uh, in the counter spindle and we can see these synchronization points uh, these synchronization points were inserted automatically uh, because by default our takeover operation have this parameter 
synchronized with. And this operation is synchronized with part of operation. So uh, this parameter is defined by default and uh, you do not need to make any action to make it actual. So let's continue. Let's continue. Another topic I would like to sh explain how to use these tools. So uh, these tools is already, is already installed in my machine and uh, usually and usually I machine uh, together two parts one part is machined by main spindle tools and another part is machined by counter spindle tools. How to do it? Let me disable multi-channel mode go to machining and uh, for example I have I have this operation and I would like to drill this hole on only this chamfer. Just go to new operation, create holes, left holes machining. So Sprutcam selected this tool by default. Uh, if I calculate it, I have problem with approach. I need to redefine the approach, uh, approach rule. Uh, so I would like to perform approach z first and after that x y and so after the calculation we can see so machining is uh, drilling is ready let's go to simulation uh, simulate to this place and uh, approach and drilling it's it's very simple it's the same exactly as I made uh, as I made uh, turning before. Okay, about another another part. I go to this, and so right now I would like to drill this hole. Again, I go to a new operation, create holes, leave holes machining. So because the operation is located is working on sub spindle, we can see that. Uh, the tool selected, uh, correct tool is selected, and uh, right now we can see incorrect workpiece because we have reset the operation. Let me recalculate everything. So, right now, let's simulating uh, in this single channel mode. The the sub spindle is located in this place and after that uh, tool is going to the and drilling what is important here these tools is uh, is controlled by is located on axis x1 y1 and we need uh, and we need to use axis of the main spindle to move the tool to the correct position after that we need to use the axis of sub spindle x uh, x2 and z2 to perform the machining so if i move the multi channel mode we will see that the operation in the main spindle and in the sub spindle are synchronized uh, so let me load the project I prepared to you uh, just to not spend so much time. Loading the project. Uh, so we have pre operation in the main spindle. It's, it's the same part drilling after that chamfering and after that uh, taping. Uh, and again, free operation in the sub spindle. Drilling, chamfering, and taping. Let me make uh, this object invisible again. Oh. And uh, let me run the simulation in the multi channel mode. Again. We have 
bar feeding, roughing, simultaneous roughing in both channels. Okay, after that, okay, I forget, this project contains the milling operation, let me demonstrate it. So, the milling uh, of the hexagon is milling of this. And uh, finally, we make synchronous machining of the holes, performing approach and uh, approach of subspindle, waiting and synchronous machining, drilling in the main and subspindles together, waiting, after that making chamfering, and after that making tapes, tapering. Okay, and finally, T-cover and part off and move retraction. Okay, that's that's our project. The <coughs> question is, if I don't need to synchronize this operation in the main spindle and the operation in the counter spindle, is it possible to not synchronize it? No, it's impossible. Uh, the main reason is that to control the tool, we need access of the main spindle to approach the tool, and after that we need the uh, we need the access of the counter spindle to make the machining. So, for example, if I don't have operations in many in the main spindle, I go to machining, and for example, I delete this operation for chamfering. Let me delete it. What happens right now? Let me recalculate all the project because the structure of the project is uh, changed. So I recalculated. If I go to simulation mode, we can see this kind of tool, weight tool number 12. So this operation, uh, this operation do nothing. It just approach the tool number 12 and waiting until the sub spindle perform the chamfering. Uh, so this uh, kind of our code is very, very close to the uh, kind of real G code. And the, in the post-processor, you do not need to make difficult, difficult changes. Okay, another question, a little bit, uh, Sprutcam, find the place there to insert this operation. I can say again, this operation is absent in this list, but it exists in the multi-channel mode. And Sprutcam found the place where to insert it. Uh, it calculates this plate automatically and make it quite good, but if you don't like it, uh, this operation is paired with this chamfer operation and we can select this and there is the parameter to process after and there is a place there to insert this operation in main spindle. So right now I would like to pro process this chamfer operation in the sub spindle channel after the drilling in the main spindle will be, will be fixed. If I delete uh, all these operations, it also will be created special weight tool operation. So I hope it's enough for the usage of these kind of tools. These kind of tools exist in, um, in the most kind of Swiss uh, lathes. And the next topic I would like to demonstrate is how to, how to machine the long parts. Uh, I have prepared the, another project. So one moment, let me disable this one, okay, and I have prepared another project. Please write your questions in the chat. Okay, uh, you can see another machine. Uh, this machine is uh, Hanva 32, and uh, I would like to machine this part. This part is quite long. Uh, 
you can see the sizes, distances, we can edit it. Okay. Uh, I will repeat almost the same. Make me again make this part invisible. This invisible. This also, I don't need it. And, and this part might be transparent. Okay. Uh, so, again, do the same. I have already two parts installed here. The second part is after the spindle. And in the main part, the first operation must be bar feeding. Move part, bar feeding. Uh, by default, by default, the bar overhang is 100. 100, it's the length of the part plus width of the cutoff tool and uh, additional distance. So I don't need to, okay, let me, let me change this value. Uh -huh. Sorry. Not my mouse, sorry. Okay, this minimal distance, uh, so this distance, it's a minimal, it depends on the machine schema. Uh, we have the special special object here. On, so uh, if the overhang is less than 37, uh, the X Z1 is out of limits in this case. So I would like to set, for example, 70. It, it's not default because I want to machine not all the part. 0.70. Uh, and uh, calculator tool pass. Bar feeding is ready. The same again. Repeat add the roughing and uh, edit the job assignment. to this place. Hmm. Sorry. Ah. Too much is enough. Okay. Machining roughing. Okay. And after that, I would like to move to move the part from sub spindle to for the further machining. To do it, I will use the new operation move part uh, sub spindle walking. It's the new operation I created. Uh, what is it? The main it has the next parameters. The first parameter, spindle position, it's a position of the main spindle where the sub spindle will take the part. Uh, these coordinates is, is defined in the machine coordinates. It's not the G54 coordinates. By default, it's zero and it's good for me. The next, the next parameter is peak position. It's the coordinates of sub spindle in the active in the active origin so this point it's the uh, tooling point of sub spindle sub spindle it's a tool so i can go to the tool and change the overhang and change this position i will not do it i don't need it and in peak position i define i define the place there my sub spindle will take the will take the part okay minus 12 is good it's active coordinate after that uh, fit distance so 15 millimeters it's the distance that will be performed on rapid fit and the next parameter uh, do place i need to switch it on if i want to move the part in the main spindle by default i have 70 millimeters uh, it's the same distance that i already defined it in the bar overhang uh, so i will not change it but I can move, for example, and would like, for example, machine. Let me input this distance. It's enough for the machining. 
next parameter I can read uh, if it is enabled active spindle is moved without the workpiece and if disabled let me disable it for for example and I will show and the make return by default it is disabled let me switch it on and return the distance again 15 millimeters let's calculate the tool pass what happens right now uh, tool sub spindle is going on the rapid feed after that on the walk feed after that clamping and move move by counters uh, by counter spindle moving the part and after that making the return and that's all uh, let me set all the machine operation uh, if i switch on this swiss type place and i really don't need return if uh, if return is disabled uh, then main spindle and sub spindle are synchronized and all further operation are performed on both spindles so i disable it and switch on this parameter uh, this parameter is absent if machine don't have uh, uh, don't have z1 axis let me recalculate the tool pass and check how it will look right now uh, approach approach on the work fit after that clump that part and you can see that z1 axis is moved back and uh, the counter spindle is fixed in this position okay so the counter spindle is located here and next i would like to perform the machining in both spindles let me create for example another operation again again on deriving and uh, i would like to machine something like this uh, start in this position mm -hmm. start in this position okay previous operation was not and finish and finish somewhere here and define the okay calculating go to simulation and let's start the simulation of this and we can see the collision stop on collision is and after that machining is performed so because of collision i understand that uh, the pickup place is not correct and i need to go to my sub spindle operation and say that peak position must be not minus 12 but minus minus 10 for example if i recalculate operation let me also edit another my mistake uh job assignment i would like to machine it sorry i would like to machine it till this place okay it, it will be better and to calculate everything uh -huh. nice let's go to simulation and check everything bar feeding is the first roughing after that also good also after that taking counter spindle move part and machining in synchronized mode main spindle and some spindle is synchronized okay and finally for example i would like to i would like to machine uh, this groove let me add lathe or the grooving operation i don't need slotting i would like grooving and replace the side change the, from this position to this position that's enough and calculate 
and go to simulation and uh, in this position I would like to simulate the grooving. We can see both tools actually only this one and and finishing in the end. So all of the machining is performing the same way and uh, right now I explained to you how to use the subspindle locking operation. So uh, common things uh, you have three operations bar feeding, subspindle locking and turn takeover and all these operation was used in my explanation.